John here guys and today we're talking about the Impulse RC Apex HD. Now you may have seen Mr. Steel over on his channel flying some DJI FPV very recently, finally the most recent version and the correct camera. So beautiful, I had no idea. And so given that he decided to try DJI FPV, I decided to try one of his signature builds, one of his signature frames, the Apex. Now this is probably one of the only super ultra premium frames that I have not yet checked out on my channel. And that's because when it came out, it was kind of an improved evolved version of the Alien, which I always found a little plain you know a little bit old school you know it's not that i didn't like it i've just done that way back in the day and this seemed like more of the same but after deciding to try it uh i was actually surprised at how much it looks reminiscent to that signature old design but how it has so many modern features that make this um, kind of that classic style, reimagined, reborn, re-innovated. It reminds me a lot of those classic car releases, like an, like a Camaro or a Challenger, or reminds you of the vintage feel, but has all of the comforts of modern design. Um, one of the main things that I've always really liked about this Apex um, frame is this very simple molded, arm wire guard. If you really think about it, all of the drones that we build up with the wires running along the side, they just look kind of unfinished. It's not something that you would normally see on a consumer grade product. So it always gives it sort of a homemade look. This really gives you a more finished look. But what it does for you in addition to just the looks are you get something that is really designed to hold this DJI Air unit here at the rear. There are a lot of frames that say that they're designed for the Air unit and they are, but they require some kind of 3D printed thing in order to properly hold it. But this was designed so amazingly precise that that air unit just fits in there. In fact, I was gonna use some 3M 30 pound mounting tape to hold that thing down, but this is designed so precisely that it just holds itself in place. And so I've tried flying it to see if it would fly around, float around, it does not. Let's go over the build itself because originally when I decided to undertake this project, I was going to do a Mr. Steel remake of his build. But along the way, I just decided that I wanted to do my own Johnny Five version of his build formula. I made a lot of special modifications myself, but because I wanted to carry my GoPro Hero 9 with this thing. And given the extra weight of that compared to the cameras that he uses, I wanted a little extra power. So I wanted to keep it inside the FX family though. So I went with the FX Moon Boot, the 2407-2200 KV, one of my favorite motors of all time. And I am running that on 6S and I've actually been doing it without a throttle cut. So the power system, I didn't really want to explore KISS at this time. So this is the Hyperlite 45 amp ESC and I am combining that with the T-Motor F4 HD flight controller. So it is plug and play with that DJI Air unit. Of course, I'm using Crossfire. Now I thought about doing Mr. Steel's mounting technique with the Immortal L that he runs with a couple of zip types at the end, but I'm like, you know what? This is the Johnny Five edition. I like to run the Immortal T antenna. For my freestyle builds, I like to run it on an arm. So that's what I've done here. Um, and then of course I'm doing some sort of sketchy mounting with the DJI Air antennas, but it actually works pretty well. Uh, Mikel, one of my local guys, when I showed a picture to the local group, he was like, fix that antenna mounting. It looks terrible. Do not show this to the world. But you know what? That's what I did. 
I could have printed something. I found some prints, but they would have added 10 grams or 12 grams. And you know what? These antennas are actually pretty solid. So they're anchored here to the frame because there's some specific zip tie mounting places for that. They're anchored to each other right here. They're not gonna flop around. As you can see, if I'm shaking it, it's not moving into the props because these are rigid. It's totally fine. The main thing you have to worry about with this DJI Air Internet antennas is if you're gonna lose them at the back, which you're not because of how this frame is designed. Speaking of the design of this frame, a couple of things that you can overlook if you just look at it at a glance are the fact that this bottom plate is actually two separate pieces and they lie on two separate planes. The rear piece actually goes above the arms and the front piece goes below the arms. Well, that's notable because you can actually give yourself a sandwich on these individual arms. That means you will never get a millimeter of arm wiggle in here. Um, speaking of arm wiggle, these are six millimeter arms. These arms are super powerful. In addition to that, the way that the arm is designed, you get a good amount of motor protection, especially on these larger size 24 millimeter wide motors. Um, you still have about six or seven mils outside that's gonna protect the edge of that motor belt. In addition to that, these molded arm skids are really gonna protect the bottom of the arms. And what the other thing that that does is you have such rigidity on this frame because of these um, bolt inserts that really hold everything down. It gives a lot of strength there, but you might think you would scratch these up. Well, having these Kids, just a couple mils um, lower than that, it makes it the perfect companion for never scratching up any of these hardware, making it difficult to disassemble. In addition to that, the skid is a perfect length to be able to have an immortal T under the arm right there and never actually touch it. My goodness. And of course, it has the chin bumper. Now, Mr. Steele's version, he goes with the O the coyote brown um, colorway on his. I wanted to go with a black and just really be able to highlight these outstanding bronzish, bronzish ethics uh, moon boot motors. Now, um, I do wish that this skid also covered the edge of the arm. Well, somebody designed a 3D printed version that is exactly like this but it has a lip around the arm. So I printed out a set of these. It actually came out really, really good on my Prusa, but I didn't have screws long enough to be able to run it. So I'm still running these until I get some longer screws to switch over to this. I printed out this sort of couch style GoPro mount and you have enough room for a strap to fit on the top plate and hold your GoPro 9 or 8 or whatever hero version they're using right here. Um, I'm using the Ethics uh, Lemon Lime props. I believe these are the S4. They really accompany this so perfectly on freestyle. This does come out a little bit heavy. It's about 440 grams or so um, with this setup as is without the battery and without the GoPro. So it is definitely heavier than Mr. Steele's formula. And that's why I want the larger motors to offset that. The extra power that you get with this motor um, just makes the weight of that GoPro disappear. It flies like a dream. I'm basically flying the default Betaflight tune on 4.2 on here. And there's almost no oscillations, almost no prop wash. I mean, I can see why freestylers love this formula. My goodness, the precision and yet the smoothness. Even with the weight of the GoPro and a 6S battery, I have the power just to instantly fly over the trees. You can see sometimes I'll do a punch out. I'll flip back over upside down and I still have so much momentum that I keep rising even upside down. I was inverted. <coughs> no, he was, man. It was a really great move. The power, the hang time of this formula is just outstanding. The power is addicting, but the precision and the delicate control and feel that you have means that even after that giant loop as you come crashing to the ground, instead of just giving yourself a giant bump, you can delicately get that really smooth transition and just kind of go into a gentle forward motion inches above the ground. Oh man, this was 
a delight. So I could see why people would want to use this for exploring, for freestyling, for long ranging, or for on set cinema gigs. Uh, because as Mr. Steele has proven, this is a proven cinema rig if that is your desire. And you know, my tried and true formula up until this point for getting GoPro footage has been my Armitan Badger six inch, which I like to fly five inch props on. And golly, this is right there with it. And you get a little bit thicker arm with this formula. You both, you have pretty good motor protection on both. I do like that the Badger has the adjustable camera case so you can quickly adjust your camera angle. But honestly, for these freestyle builds, you're not gonna really do a lot of camera adjustment. It's not like a race build where you might adjust two or three or five degrees based on if you have a long track or a short track or a tight track. Um, you're really just gonna have your camera angle set it and forget it. And both have pretty good camera to protection. The Armitan does have slightly better camera protection, um, overall component protection. This actually fits and protects the air unit a little bit better in my opinion. Neither one have really great air unit um, antenna mounting. Arm design, I think I'm gonna have to give the nod to the Apex. You have less arm wiggles on here, you have beefier arms on here. So, man. This made me a believer, guys. I thought this was just a plain Jane, but it's really not. I get why you guys like these things so much. What do you think in the comments, guys? Um, are you on this freestyle formula? What is your current freestyle choice? And what is your current action camera of choice? Have you switched over to the um, GoPro 9? Are you still on the Session 5? What are you guys doing? Thanks, guys.